All right, hey, what's up everybody? Gratuitous here from itsgratuitous.com. In this tutorial, I wanna quickly cover how to organize your files in FL Studio, okay? So before we get into it, definitely check out my free book I have for you guys. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. It's a beat making book I've written specifically for FL Studio producers, okay? All right, so in this tutorial, I wanna talk about your folder structure, okay? So there's two ways you can approach it. You can use FL Studio's folder structure. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that FL Studio recently updated this i think it was around fl studio 12 or 20 and i would recommend this approach uh it is easy to add all your projects all your files in and it's been reworked and like i'm saying it's just a lot more organized in my early years before the change uh, i did experience some missing files and so i ended up creating my own custom approach which i will explain down here so how this works is fl studio stores it like in your documents all right and what's really, really awesome is that you can easily transfer your FL Studio files if you are doing the documents approach. Uh, and all you have to do is just, when you go to a new computer, you can just bring your documents over into your new computer and you're all up and running. So it's a really quick way to do it, a quick approach. And it's all built into FL Studio, uh, even inside of like the browser. You can access everything nice and easy okay so that's one way that you can organize your files again before fl studio i believe 12 uh there was missing files but nowadays they've reworked it they really took their time to make sure it was nice and good so you can be doing it this way okay all right so i just want to quickly talk about my own folder structure and i do have a course on this it's just nine bucks it's called a specific music production folder and so i'm just going to go custom folder okay so um in my opinion, this is the way how I've done it. It's allowed me to work really easy. It allows me to know exactly where all my music files are, where all my sounds are, all my VSTs are, and my projects. I also put this into the cloud, okay? So let's just start by doing this, okay? So this is a custom music folder. And inside this custom music folder, uh, the first place I go with it is the cloud, okay? so. Whatever cloud service you want to use, you're going to be using a cloud service. Why this is so uh, powerful is because if you do want to transfer computers or even if you like, for example, let's say you're working on a project and you exported the MP3 and you just have it in your music folder, everything's accessible from your phone, from your iPad, from your desktop. OK, that's and also backup, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, whatever happens, as long as you know your password, you can get in here. OK, now inside this custom music folder. Uh, I'll just list some of the things that I include, okay? So in this custom music folder, again, I am putting in the cloud, uh, but I am putting my sounds. Now, these sounds are my uh, VSTs, all right, as well as my uh, drum kits, okay? So uh, one thing I do want to say about VSTs is uh, nowadays the VST3 is becoming a little bit more commonplace, and you're going to be having to put that into your common files folder however i do keep the executable file okay the exe uh, with the license so in other words when i have these vsts now i'm selective on the types of vsts i use you do not need thousands of vsts because what's going to happen is over time things will start breaking on you okay you have to remember a vst is a plugin FL Studio by itself is the music program. It has stock plugins. You can make music in there. And when we are bringing plugins into FL Studio, there is always the potential for this plugin to not work with FL Studio one day. Let's say that the plugin developer stops updating it in like five years from now and you want to go and reopen those old projects. Let's say there's a bug. All right. So you always got to think this way. And that's why it's important to select good plugins that you like but you don't need thousands of them, okay? So how I would approach it is, again, I always talk to you guys about Fab Filter plugins. I understand they're expensive, but they are awesome. So I would go Fab Filter, and inside of Fab Filter, and then inside of Fab Filter, I make sure to include this EXE file into Fab Filter. And then when I install it, I do install the VST3s, which go into a different folder, but I keep the executable file. I also keep the license around to make it really easy. Let's say uh, we are installing, let's say Serum. So I would go uh, X for records. And then inside of X for records, um, I would create another folder and I put Serum because maybe over time I would have a couple plugins from X for Records and you just kind of keep creating a folder for each plugin you have and then you just put this executable file in there with the license.
Okay, I'm telling you, this is such an easy way to do it because if you ever switch over your computer, you know exactly all the plugins that you're using. And then if you ever have used a plugin on a serious project and you don't wanna use it anymore, uh, I create a folder and it's called like uh, the deprecated folder, okay? So uh, the word deprecated, uh, this is like a coding term, but what we're talking about is, let's say uh, we had a plugin and you know, you're starting to realize that you don't really like it anymore. But if you've used it on a serious project, you still want to keep that plugin around. So I would start putting those um, plugins that I don't want to use anymore in this deprecated folder. So I still have them if I need to access them, but they'd no longer be in this main folder, which is all like the good plugins, if that makes sense. OK, so I'll repeat that because it's really important for you to understand if you're just getting started making beats. So you're going to have your main folder of VSTs that you're using all the time. You keep an executable file um, and then the ones that you don't like anymore or like that you don't want to use, you just put them in the deprecated folder. So you keep the executable file around, but you, it's there in case you ever need it. OK, for drum kits these are just like your one shot drum samples again i just organize them by vendor i tell you guys about the exclusive audio so i'll just go xa for exclusive audio but you know any drum kits i have would be going into there let's say you had another brand it goes into there another brand goes into there okay now this is by far in my opinion, the most simple and easiest way, I understand a lot of people like using uh, file managers and stuff like, you know, they bring in a plugin and it organizes all their sounds and they try to organize them by like low kick drum and like short tailed kick drum. And I'm telling you guys that stuff is it takes way too much time. Uh, if you want things really simple and really easy, just do it this way. And then over time, you start to learn where your sounds are inside of your uh, inside of all your drum kits. It's the easiest way. OK, so for other things I would store in here is like my actual projects. Okay, so inside of projects, you know, if you if you're working on albums, or if you are working on, uh, so that's albums, and then uh, for for me, for example, I like to release beat tapes, right? Or if you are working with like clients, right? So for example, if you're working one on one with a client or whatever you're doing, it's just like everything's in here, and since it's in the cloud. It just allows things to be so easy. All right. So again, uh, you guys can approach it however you want, but I've just found this way has been so easy because again, it's in the cloud. If I ever want to access anything from a laptop, a computer, a phone, a tablet, whatever, I can easily access my music folder. It's backed up. If I ever need to transfer a computer, I know exactly where all my VSTs are. Again, here's the executable. Now the executable, it, it could be out of date and that's fine, but it's just the fact that you have the plugin and you know what plugins you have to install to get you back up to speed. OK, so again, there's two ways you can approach it. You can definitely use the FL Studio way uh, again, since this has been new and improved. Uh, you can go with this approach if you would like. But what was happening to me in my early years is that um, when I transferred over to a new computer, I was experiencing missing files. And I'm telling you, it's the worst thing ever to have missing files. OK, so I just approached it by creating a custom music folder. It's in the cloud. I store all my different uh, folders. Now, again, if you want more information on my custom music folder, you guys can check out my course. It's called a specific music production folder. It's just nine dollars. Or if you join the membership, you can access all of the courses. OK, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. And if you guys would like to download my free book, all right, it's for FL Studio producers. Just go to it's gratuitous dot com forward slash five keys. And I'll send you the book absolutely free if you sign up with your name and email. You also do want to have a local backup. OK, so a local backup is like your hard drives and stuff like that. And in my opinion, the easiest way to plan this out is with paper and pencil. Get yourself a paper and pencil. Draw out. How do you want to organize your folders? And again, you want to be thinking long term. And uh, the one thing to say with music production is if you do not have thousands of VSTs and thousands and thousands of sounds, your actual file size isn't that huge. Like it's not like, for example, recording videos where files can start getting really big. Music production, you know, uh, I showed you in my Safe Spots book. It's all about drum loops. I showed you, I think my drum kit folder is like four to maybe six gigabytes of sounds. And I've been doing this for like 10 years. So that says a lot, right? I keep my drum kits as high quality sounds where I know exactly where they are, all my kicks, all my claps, and it's just easy. All right. So to learn more, visit itsgratuitous.com to keep learning FL Studio with me.